Hello again. Well, today we're going to tie this hare's ear and squirrel nymph. Um, this fly was kind of born out of my love for a gold ribbed hare's ear. Um, and I always liked uh, squirrel dubbing. Um, it, it's just scruffy. I, I like my scruffy flies. I just think they they just work better for me. I don't know why it will be. Maybe they do look more natural. I don't know. But um, And this is a very scruffy nymph, you know. There's hairs and things going everywhere. But it really catches fish. It, it's brilliant in the river. Um, and it works really well in the still waters too. Uh, as always, it's not difficult to tie. Um, and uh, I quite like tying these. They're good fun. I know I always say that, but... I do enjoy tying certain flies more than more than others. I enjoy it all, of course. But anyway, I'll stop wittering. Let's take this one out of the vise. And in the vise, I'm going to put a size 14. Now, this is a, it's actually a fulling meal hook. And it's called a living lava. Uh, it's a bronze hook. Like I said, size 14. Brilliant hooks, these. Anyway, onto that, I'm just going to put... A few turns of lead, we're about 10 actually. This is 0 0.40. One, two, three, four. Just snapped on me there, just take that bit off. There we go. So there's about 10 turns of lead, just to help the fly sink. Uh, thread is a Uni 8O, the colour is Camel. I'm just going to run the thread through the wax to give me some grip. And we're going to get on and get this one done. There we go. So, as always, I'm going to... Let's just move this a little bit. I'm just going to, whoops, a daisy. I'm just going to start the thread just behind the eye, or just in front of the lead, sorry, behind the eye. Just make a little dam in front of the lead. Come over make a little dam behind the lead and what's that what that will do for you is stop the lead moving around on the shank okay i'm just going to come over the lead up once and then come over the lead once down and then i'm going to continue down till i'm about where the barb starts on the hook <coughs> excuse me right the tail on this fly is a squirrel tail um, and I just, I like to, for these smaller ones, I like to try and get the hair from the bottom of, uh, the, the tail here. You, you don't need much. You don't need much of this at all. So you can either pull it or cut it from the actual squirrel's tail itself. Now, I like the tail to be about as long as the body and I can't tell you how many actual individual strands there are in, in this bit of hair that I've pulled off the squirrel tail because I don't count them. I just I just think to myself, yeah, that looks good. I'm just going to come back there because sometimes I do think to myself, no, that doesn't look good. Um, I just wanted a little bit of a thicker tail. I didn't take enough off the hide there. It's um, The tails on these... I like to be bushy. This is a really scruffy fly. So again, get your measure about as long as the body of the fly is going to be. I'm happy with that. I'm going to come underneath just to help prop the tail up. Just going to come in and take a, a few out. That's better. Right now I'm going to quickly run the thread up to the back of the lead. Gather up all the waste pieces of this uh, squirrel tail and I'm going to come in and get rid of the the uh, waist like that and there's your tail any particularly long, long ones just pluck them th free so I'm going to double check my wax and I'm going to put on a piece of tinsel well tinsel this is a silver wire and it's a medium silver wire I've had this for years it's just a medium silver wire. They call it a tinsel, but it is actually a wire. I'm going to catch this 
my side of the hook with a nice wax, waxed thread, stop it from going anywhere. And I'm going to run down to where the tail started. And now I'm going to put in some hen pheasant fibre. So this is a hen pheasant tail feather. And I'm going to gather, oh, I don't know, 15, something like that, strands. Pull them from the hide. I'm just going to take my thread up a little bit. Pull them from the stem, sorry, not the hide. Pull them in and then wrap down again to the beginning of the tail. Now I'm going to take the thread up, cover in the butts of that hen pheasant, and I'm going to take the thread back down again. And now I'm going to add some dubbing. Now this is a, a mixture, this dubbing for the body, and it's a mixture of squirrel dubbing, squirrel fur, and this is hare's mask fur, and it's literally just the fur that I've picked off of a hare's mask, a hare's face, <laughs> and um, just put it all in the bag, blended it and put it all in the bag, and this is just squirrel body fur. Um, and I've mixed that, whoops a daisy, I've mixed that 50-50. So I just mixed it in my hands like this, just a little finger dub. And now I'm just gonna dub that onto the thread. Oh, just wanna take a little bit out, there we go. I'm just gonna dub it onto the thread like that nice and tight and then we just run it straight up nice and simple this really is a an easy easy fly to tie so i'm just going to run that dubbing up to where i want the thorax to begin which is going to be about there i'm going to pull the hen pheasant over flatten it out with my finger catch it just a couple of turns, that's lovely. Now I'm gonna come in with a wire and I'm gonna come round, I don't know, four or five times, two, three, four, come in front of the hen pheasant. Sometimes it can be fiddly to hold the hen pheasant out of the way. Let's just catch the wire off, just like that. And I'll make sure I've got wax on the thread and now I'm gonna wiggle, 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 wiggle. That'll break it off and they'll come back to the end of the body and pin that hen pheasant down with some thread. And now I'm gonna come in with, this is just the squirrel body fur on its own. It's just a little bit darker. The only reason I mix it really with that hair's mask for the body is I, I just want it to be, um, I just want it to be a slightly lighter colour. There we go. So we're going to dub that on. And now I'm going to come round, building up a nice thorax on the fly. I'm going to come in just having a look. There you go, I'm happy with that. I'm going to come over, I'm going to put a little bit more actually, I say I'm happy with that. Always look and then always double check. It's going to come in with a little bit more of this uh, squirrel's body fur. I just want to thicken that thorax slightly. And there we go. Hold the dubbing back as best you can. Tie in front, just like that. And then this is a this is just a, an Indian cock cape feather in like a Cree variant colour, and it's one of the smaller feathers from right down the bottom. So it's going to take some of the waste away from the bottom. Just like that. I'm just going to make sure I've got wax on the thread here. Let me catch that on. Oh, I'm going to pull that in a little bit better than that. Gonna catch that on. There we go with a wax thread. Make sure it's nice and tight. Just see how it's sitting. It's just fighting me a little bit this feather, and it's not sitting how I want it to. So when they do do that, I'll squish the feather um, normally with some tweezers, and I'll try and flatten the stem 
uh, flatten the stem like that with the tweezers and sometimes that I found anyway can help the feather sit better because you've got a concave and a convex side of the feather you can see it curved there well I want that curve to remain as it is now curving back so I'm just going to hold that feather on and catch it in and you go there you go that time it sat lovely for me so it's just a matter of taking your time having a bit of patience get rid of the stem double double check your wax make sure we get plenty of grip bring your thread to the front and now normally I do it with my fingers but I'm just gonna I've actually got a new pair of hackle pliers and so far they're a lot better than the other ones he says as it just lets go there we go grab the feather properly um i want about four turns of hackle there's two there's three it's going to move all these back there's four and i'm gonna when i come up to start the fifth one that's where i'm gonna catch it so i'm gonna catch it off take the hackle pliers off hold everything back Smooth everything back, catch everything down, find the tip of the feather and just break him off. Come here, you little monkey. There we go. Now I'm going to bring the hen pheasant over as a thorax cover, sweeping everything back. Catch it, make sure he stays on the top. One, whoop. hold everything back. One, two, three, pin him back. One, two, three. I don't know why I count out loud then. Um, Take that away. We're just gonna come right in and there we go. Bit of wax to cover that up. Don't be shy of a head, by the way. Some nymphs have got big heads. And there you go. Now it's just a matter of just ignore everything at the minute. Bit of varnish on the thread. Uh, there we go. Come in with a whip finish. Three or four is plenty. Trim the thread away and have a look at your nymph. There we go, there's a long hair down in here I don't like. But that's lovely. Now that is just a real generic um generic nymph. Um <laughs> it's not going to represent anything in particular but it is going to represent a lot in general just like my beloved hairs here does so give this one a go because it really does catch fish and if you've liked the video go uh, the video sorry please like please subscribe to the channel and i'll see you on the next one thank you